Today, we are going to take a look at some of the important interview questions that can be asked from the C programming language. So, let's take a look. First question is, what is dynamic memory allocation in C? So, the answer is, dynamic memory allocation is the process of allocating memory to the program and its variables during runtime. It involves three functions for allocating the memory and one function to free the used memory or deallocate it. So the three functions that are used to allocate the memory are malloc, calloc and realloc. The function that is used to deallocate the used memory is free. All these functions have no parameters. Next question, what do you mean by memory leak? So, memory leak can be defined as a situation where programmer allocates dynamic memory to the program but fails to free or delete the used memory after the completion of the code. This is a harmful process if demons and servers are included in the program. Further, if the memory is being allocated but is not being freed, then it can cause a problem in the memory management. So this is memory leak. Next question, what is the difference between declaring a header file with angular brackets and double quotes? If the header file is declared using the angular brackets, then the compiler searches for the header file within the built-in path. But if the header file is declared using the double quotes, then the compiler will search for the header file in the current working directory first. And if it is not found over there, then it searches for the file in the other locations. Next question. What is typecasting? Typecasting is a process of conversion of one data type into another. It is a form of explicit conversion. That is, it is done as per the choice and wish of the user. Syntax for typecasting is, within parentheses, you need to mention the target data type, that is, the data type into which you want to convert your expression into and after that you write the expression and end the statement with a semicolon. For example, char ch is initialized with a. So ch is a character variable that is holding the character capital A. int val is another integer variable in which we have casted this character variable. So we have written int val equals within parenthesis int that is our target data type and then we have mentioned ch. So this is explicit conversion using typecasting. Now val will store the ASCII value of capital A which is nothing but 65. Next question. What is the hash pragma directive? It is a preprocessor directive that can be used to turn on or off certain features in a C program. It is of three types, hash pragma startup, hash pragma exit and hash pragma warn. Hash pragma startup allows us to specify functions upon program startup. That is, when the program starts, then what functions will be fired automatically? Hash pragma exit allows us to specify functions called upon the program exit. That is, when the program is about to exit, then what functions do we need to perform? Hash pragma warn tells whether to suppress any warning in the C program or not. Next question is, what is null pointer in C? Null is used to indicate that the pointer 
doesn't point to a valid location. The pointers should be initialized as null if their value is unknown at the time of declaration or when the memory pointed by the pointer is deallocated within a program. Next question. How will you print numbers from 1 to 100 without using a loop? So we know that if we want to do something in a repeated fashion, we use loop for that purpose. But how can you print numbers from 1 to 100 without using a loop? So one method is that you have to write the printf statement 100 times, but that is just a troublesome process. So we have another process, another method through which we can do so and that is known as recursion. Recursion is the repeated calling of a function by itself. So here we have created a function whose return type is void. The name of the function is print numbers and it accepts an integer argument n. Within the body of the function there is an if statement. If n is greater than 0, then it calls itself. It calls print numbers and passes n minus 1 into it. After that calling, it will print the value of n. So this print numbers function calls itself and using that, it will print the value of n and n will be supplied by the user. So it is a recursive calling of print numbers and using this we can print easily the numbers from 1 to 100 without using any loop. So now we also know that using recursion anything that could be done through loops can be done easily. Next question, what are local static variables and what is their use? A local static variable is a variable whose lifetime doesn't end with a function call where it is declared. It extends for the lifetime of complete program. All calls to the function share the same copy of local static variables. Static variables can be used to count the number of times a function is called. The static variables get the default value as 0. Next question. Why preprocessor directive does not end with a semicolon? So the answer is semicolon is treated by the compiler and as the name suggests the preprocessors are programs that process the source code before compilation. Even starts. Therefore, the use of semicolon in preprocessors is not needed. Next question. What is the smallest possible executable code in a C programming language? Since the presence of main function is needed for a program to start its execution, so the smallest possible executable code in C it is mandatory to include a main function. So the code will be void main, parentheses open and close, and braces open and close. That means it will only contain a main function with parentheses but no arguments and no body. So this code will be compiled also, it will be executed also, but it will not do anything. This is the smallest possible executable code in the C programming language. So that's it. Thanks for watching.